Robin Mitchell and welcome to Maker.io. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the servo motor. Now, servo motors are unlike normal DC brushed motors in that they can be controlled in position. But the interesting thing about them is that they are powered from DC brushed motors. Now, inside a servo motor is a brushed DC motor and this is connected to a series of shafts and gears to reduce the output speed but increase the output torque. And the shaft is also connected to a potentiometer, which is then connected to a encoder chip or a decoder, sort of like a motor controller I see. And essentially what it does is that it always tries to keep the potentiometer value at a certain value, depending on what signal is fed into the servo. So if it finds that the servo has been pushed a bit too far in one direction, it will try and bring it back. And that is essentially how servos work. Now driving a servo does require a PWM signal but it's not the duty cycle so much that you're adjusting, you're actually adjusting the size of the pulse and it only varies between one and two milliseconds with the whole waveform being anywhere between 20, 30, 10, it doesn't really matter. Which is why it's hard to sort of describe it as being a duty cycle because there's a lot of give way in terms of the frequency of the wave. But what does matter is, is this very specific timing of the one or two milliseconds, which determines if the servo is in zero degrees or 180. Now, servos are very useful for a range of tasks, including robotic arms, where you can have three different axes and the uh, individual arm parts can be moved. Or if you're looking for something a bit more interesting, things like automatic wire cutters. Now, what we have here is a stepper motor that is connected to a wire feeder from a CNC machine. And as this thing pulls the wire through, it feeds it through a pair of pliers and then this servo here which is considerably larger than your typical micro server is then connected to the pliers so that when it pulls it down it can cut the wire so let's see a quick demonstration of how we can actually use a servo in a microcontroller setup as we see here so all i need to do is power this system up and we can watch the wires come out quite quickly of course doing this is a little difficult because my power supply is there and my wires are a bit too short so I'm gonna to have to make some wires. I'll be back in two seconds. Now, of course, you can use servos in many other applications as well. They make very good legs for robots, um, but what really matters is the torque capability of the servo. So the micro ones, as you like these very common ones you find on eBay and other places, they are rated for about nine grams, I think. And that's great for small projects like these tiny little robotic arms, but when it comes to maybe cutting wire or needing a bit more force, they're just not really there. And the other thing you need to consider about servos as well is their power source. Now, as you can see in this setup, we've got a, quite a large servo here and it does actually work with the Arduino Uno in this case, but in the case with the robotic arm, I actually have to power the arm separately from the Arduino because as the servo suddenly moves, it draws a lot of current and can cause a brownout on the Arduino Uno. So in this situation, what I'm doing here is I'm actually having to power the stepper motor separately but strangely enough, the larger servo motor actually can handle the Arduino Uno's power rail without causing a brownout. But you may also notice I have put a 470 microfarad capacitor across the power inputs of the Arduino. So when the servo does draw its power, it doesn't cause a brownout. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect these wires up to the power supply I have over there. There we go. and we can use servos to cut wire automatically. So that's a brief introduction as to how servos work and how you can use them. Thank you for watching and see you next time.